Hello everybody. This is a video which is a follow-up to a follow-up and um, possibly even a follow-up. Anyway, enough waffle. Um, if you've been following my channel or Maxim Korsh's channel, we're both into uh, web scraping. He's done some pretty amazing videos and um, I've, I've been following along and um, I, I was cheeky enough to rewrite part of one of his. Not through any... Um, not through spite, but really so that I could force myself to, rather than just copy his, I was forcing myself to really think about how it's built from, you know, from the ground up. So, um, yeah, I created a video as a follow-up to Maxim's Property Finder video. I mean, he, he just sat at his, at his picnic bench and, and wrote it in about an hour. Um, I, I, I took probably uh, well, 10 times as long as that. But one of the things that I was doing was I was actually following um, I was following some scrapey documentation. I was following some tutorials by um, a, a course on Udemy, Adele Rafik, and also I was also following a page on this website called Towards Data Science, and I feel like I've not really giving credit to Aaron S. <laughs> I've only just noticed that Aaron subscribed to my channel. I feel a bit um, humbled by that, really, because um, Aaron is, um, he seems to me quite a, quite, a, quite an excellent um, source for, for all things scrapey. So, um, yeah, if you haven't read Aaron's article on um, Towards Data Science, I'd, I'd really recommend that. And, uh, he seems to have nailed scrapey item loaders. So as what it occurred to me was um, just to finish off on the subject of item loaders and cleaning up the data because much of the data you collect will be, um, I don't want to say messy, but it will have tabs, spaces, and odd brackets, braces, parentheses around it. So. Um, just going back to what I'd actually scraped, which is very similar to what Maxim had originally scraped, and um, what we've got is, hmm, bathrooms is just an integer, although there's a plus sign there and a plus sign there, so I'm just going to go through the collected data and just try and identify any, um, any fields which could potentially be cleaned up further. So I'm looking at bathrooms and maybe that's one idea is to remove the plus signs just to finish tidying that up. Um, I see we've got studio in there. So we've got a combination of, of string and integers in column B. Uh, column C we've got, again, we've got integer forward slash and then we've got uh, characters there, SQM. So potentially, if you wanted to sort any of these um, by sort of ascending or descending numerical value, then it would fall over. So potentially, th these could also be cleaned up. Um, and column E, latitude, you could remove the square brackets there. And See, latitude will be the same as longitude from a, a formatting point of view. Yeah. Um, so I think what I may well do is have a read of Aaron's article, and I'm going to sort of dip in and dip out of that, and I'm going to attempt to um, learn some of his techniques and some of the built-in processes, and use those with my existing code, which you will have been able to watch in a previous video and then I will see how many of these um, columns, fields, scrapey fields actually, um, they're, they're, scra they're defined as scrapey fields in items.py and I'm going to see how many of these we can clean up. So if that's of interest, um, yeah, keep watching. Right, so I'm back and <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to fix this live. And uh, let's begin. So um, I found some code. I've been wondering whether to use compose or map compose. Obviously, map compose. Uh, I need to take that out actually. Um, map compose will 
process the first set of values and then run through, uh, iterate through those to apply the filter to um, the second uh, set of values. Whereas compose, I think I only need compose because I only want to run through these values once. And this function that I found is called filter price, whereas I don't strictly want to filter the price really. So let's um, let's just call that filter. Um, I'm not going to say int. I don't want to filter num. So let's change that. So I'm hoping that if I uh, use this <coughs> in my items.py file. I'll create the function and I'll use that on, I'll test it first on the bathrooms field because what I want to do is see some results where the seven plus has just been converted to seven. Uh, if that works, then I'll try it on, hmm. no, I won't try it on bedrooms because I that needs, hmm. I think that needs to stay as it is. Yeah, we'll leave that for now. Uh, we'll maybe try it on. Yes, we'll try it on floor area next. Anyway, that's that's down the line. So, uh, okay, let's. I'm going to move that out of the way now because that will get pasted in shortly. I've just been looking at the difference between compose and map compose. So obviously compose works on, well, a processor which is constructed from the composition of the given functions. This means that each input value of this processor is passed to the first function and the result of that function is passed to the second function and so on until the last function returns the output value of this processor. Okay. That's confusing me slightly because I thought that's what map compose did. Let's try and establish the difference. Map compose, a processor which is constructed from the composition of the given functions, similar to the compose processor. This the difference with this processor is the way internal results are passed among functions, which is as follows. The input value of this processor is iterated. Okay, and, and the first function is applied to each element. The results of these function calls, one for each element, are concatenated to construct a new iterable, which is then used to apply to the sec apply the second function. Right, I think that makes sense. So let's let's fire up. Yeah, that's I'm gonna exit. That's uh what's going on here? How did I leave it? Oh, I was testing that glob. Uh, okay. So as you can see, I was using map compose there, and I was actually uh, stripping the spaces and removing the tabs. I don't think there were any spaces. Um, I don't think there were any spaces with bedrooms and bathrooms and so on. Well, no, there wasn't because I've I've not applied any processes to them. So um, let's paste in this new function which I've found, copied. If this works, it'll be really useful because it's uh, pretty much something you would apply to virtually every 
every um, scrapey project you do, I would imagine. Um, okay. Let's just tidy that up. Tab does four spaces by default in micro, which is nice. Um, okay, so now I need to put all of this inside the brackets of what we're we doing. We were doing bedrooms. And I don't think I need that comma after take first. Let's just make it match my previous usage of a function. Just going to it's probably not PEP8 compliant, but uh, just for the sake of clarity, I'm just going to uh, tidy this up a bit. I'll put default zero down there. Presumably, if it's um, if there's no value, it will put a, a zero in the in the column. Right, I think that's okay to test. So save, quit. I'm just going to ping Google because there's a chance that my network connection is not reachable. Uh, just run my script. It's because I'm running on a VM, and if anybody knows how to fix this, it just seems to lose the. It might be because I've connected to VPN, but it seems to lose the network connection when I pause my VM and reopen it. I know a lot of you probably think, well, don't use a VM, but um, I'm still using Windows as my main OS, um, partly because of because of video editing, but. Right, let's um, let's run property. Uh, let's just delete property found CSV as well while we're at it. Okay, and I don't think I actually need to edit my spider because the beauty of using items is that the spider will pass the <laughs> messy the messy response to the items file and the items file will clean it up. So I think let's go for it. And one other thing to remember is oh. What have we got here? Error in compose. Error equals value error. Okay. So there's a space. List object has no attribute is digit. Okay, so I think it's got to the. Um, oh, is it treating it as a string? I wonder. Let's have a look. I think that's what's happening. It's Okay, let's, um, I'm just going to 
change that back to map compose and I'm going to add in I think this will still fail because it's not a, it's still not a digit. Let's try it anyway. So strip off the space and strip off the spaces and then check if it's a digit. I've got a feeling it's just a string, so try again. Oh, okay. Well, that looks, hmm. So this is the, the response before it gets passed to items, I believe. Um, let's just check that. So I think we've collected enough now. And let's open up. I'm just going to pause this one sec. Okay, there wasn't any slight of hand going on there. I just um, wanted to go, go through all my folders and uh, I've confused myself a bit because I've written. Uh, it's probably find a scraper twice, and I didn't want to go delving into the wrong folder. And uh, anyway, beside the point. Uh, on initial inspection, it looks like it's worked. So that's that's quite nice. We have on row seven, we've got a seven now, whereas previously um, we had. Check the time. So that was modified at 1414. And what is the time? 1416. Yeah, so that was the one that we've just run. Good. Okay. Let's go back in. Let's actually open the file. It's no good just looking at the preview, is it? We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So Oh. Uh. We still have seven plus. Didn't work. Bugger. Right, back in a sec. Right, let's test again. I'll uh, show you what I changed if it works. Um, I can still see, um, I can still see a space after the, the um, bedroom's number. So that's next thing on my list is to prove whether this output is pre or post items.py. Let's quit this. And Let's open up the CSV. Not going to get too excited this time. Right. It would appear. No, so we've still got seven plus. Okay, so back to drawing board. Right, so after a bit of uh, fiddling around, we're ready to see the results of working with the items.py file. So let's just remove the CSV, which had a lot of testing results in, which was starting to get a bit messy and misleading because sometimes you look at the appended file and you think that your changes haven't worked. So, yeah, 
Without further ado, let's have a quick look at the items py file. And yeah, I've opened it in sublime text, I'm sorry. So we've um, added some functions. Um, this is mainly me experimenting, so apologies for that. Um, I failed to get Compose to work, and if anybody knows the correct syntax for that, I'd be very interested, and I'm sure some others would. Um, Map Compose has been used everywhere. Um, what I've done is I've mixed up a combo of strip, uh, I've used strip in places, and I've used remove uh, new lines and tags in other places. It seems that um, <laughs> I've only been able to use Map Compose. And Map Compose relies on basically two functions, so it's not an issue because 99 times out of 100 you want to strip out any erroneous uh, new line and tab characters anyway. Um, I just used my function there for lols really, and it works, so that's okay. Um, I've made some functions. The first one is uh, the one that you saw in the previous video. Removes the new line characters, puts the space in, and then I remove the spaces. Um, that probably should be just done in one, one function, to be honest. But anyway, um, filter numbers. So in let's have a, oh, I've deleted it. Anyway, you'll see it in a second. Um, the the number. Of bedrooms and the number of bathrooms went up to seven and then if it was more than seven it just said seven plus um, and just because I wanted to experiment and just have some more uh, practice with items.py I've gone through and I've updated it so that if uh, if there's a plus so if there's seven plus it will get changed to eight I thought potentially if you were ever linking up Scrapey and a pipeline to send the output to a database, the database may only accept, um, you know, it, it might only accept 0 to 9, I don't know. But I mean, obviously, Excel, I, I tested it in Excel, and that does actually sort um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 7 plus. So. Uh, this is just um, an example, really. Um, remove text. Um, what I wanted to do was write something which would remove the um, the forward slash on the SQM. Um, because, again, if you have the output and you wanted to sort by square meterage, and again, if you were outputting to a database, you might only want the integers. So. Um, yeah, I've just used, I've imported uh, RE regular expression and substituted um, for anything that's not 0 to 9, beginning with 0 to 9, um, then put in an empty or put in nothing. So overwrite it with nothing um, and return the value. So I've used that for floor area so you'll see it's there remove um, yeah remove text so uh, let's run it and we'll just have one final look at this project before we put it to bed and um, we go off and have a little brew sorry for those who don't know a brew is uh, a cup of tea in England it's a <laughs> actually it's a it says uh, it's, it's what they say in Northern England rather than the whole of the country, but it's called a colloquialism. Anyway, I di di I don't die. I digress. Um, I'm not going to run it forever because it will just scrape on and on and on and on and on, and you'll get bored of that, and so will I. So let's just open up, see what we've got in the PDF, um, PDF CSV. And then we will ride off into the sunset. I hope this has been interesting because there aren't very many examples of um, of items, map compose, compose processes. This is scrapey documentation, but um, anyway, bedroom, our uh, bathrooms. Yeah, so we've gone down here. 
boom, there we go, 8. So previously that said 7 plus. So yeah. Again, I've explained the reasons why, but it's practice, isn't it? Um, S. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I've trimmed off. Yeah, that was saying studio. So I've, what did I do on bedrooms? Uh, we'll get back to bedrooms in a second. So yeah, floor area, you can see now it's just uh, purely numeric integers and that would be nice if it was just going into uh, for instance going straight into a database um, I haven't messed about with latitude and longitude they still sort fine you, if you sort they will still sort in ascending or descending order uh, the brackets get, the square brackets get ignored so um, yeah quickly back to why is there an S now where there used to be studio um, well Again, you could do what you want with that. You could put in zero, you could put in uh, another number. Let's just see why that's changed to S. I, that was bedrooms, was it not? Yeah. Okay, so I'm stripping off all the excess. Uh, filter num. Okay, so if the value is it's returning okay oh alpha numeric yeah so it's if, if it's an alpha or numeric I could have said I don't know I think S is probably better than seeing studio just again if you're outputting to a database you could just allocate um, uh, or eight I don't know. You could just allocate um, two bytes to it or whatever. Um, so I hope this has been something which you've not been able to see elsewhere. I, I've searched around and apart from um, Aaron's excellent article on demystifying scrapey item loaders, um, I've not really seen that much else. So, again, map compose, map compose. If anybody knows how to use compose, I'd be really interested. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, that's it from me. And I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.